In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the different, a bunch of different examples, some of the different looks, and the way different defenses play one of Duke's offensive sets. Uh, for lack of a better description, uh, I'm calling it their 1-3-2 shallow cut midfield dodging offense. I'm sure they have a much more succinct name for it. Uh, and as the name would indicate, and as you just saw, it starts with dodges from the midfield, usually against a short stick from the top center. What's going to happen is you're going to get the midfielder that the dodge is going towards is going to shallow cut to get out of the way, which basically means they're just exchanging places. They're going to come underneath the dodge um, and make a, a shallow cut towards the crease, and then they'll pop back out behind it to fill that top center spot in the 1-3-2. It has some elements of kind of, of, a, of a motion offense, as you're seeing, they're getting multiple dodges, some different motion in a row. But it also has some different elements. Uh, it's not really, I wouldn't say call it a true, a true motion offense. Um, the attack are going to kind of start with two guys inside, one guy at X, and they'll usually shift to end up in a 1-3-2 set with one, one guy in the crease and two guys down low on the posts. The set requires that the midfielders read which way the dodge is going to happen, and it's set up so that the dodger has the option to go either way. So let's here he starts to the right, and the pop starts to happen. Then he goes back, and he'll end up dodging to the left, and it's the other midfielder who's going to shallow cut and fill his spot in the center, popping out. This set offers some flexibility in terms of how the midfielder who's going to dodge wants to approach it. They can take it way out and come really downhill with some space to get up some speed, like it's out of a 1-4-1. Or it can come from more of the high wing and end up looking like a little bit more like a split down the alley, like you see here. And just like any set where you're going to initiate with a dodge, the first look is always that if the defense isn't going to slide, you're dodging to shoot and score. That it's it's that threat of being of the guy, the guy with the ball being able to score that forces the defense to slide and opens up all the other options. From that high wing starting spot a little bit off to the side, the dodge can also sweep across the top. And with that side midfielder reading the dodge coming their way, shallow cutting through, the dodge can keep coming down the alley. Another option out of this is for the dodger to roll back and shoot. Starting the dodge from the top center as opposed to a little bit lower on the wing means that they're going to end up with a better angle when they do roll back and shoot. Like any dodging offense, one of the other options that Duke is going to have out of this set is to re-dodge the slide from the wing, as he does right here. And of course, the defenders fall into each other, which makes it a lot easier for him to get to the middle of the field. But the concept remains the same, even when the defender doesn't fall down that he can settle it up for a quick second and then make an, another move back to the middle of the field, dodging against the slide. Because of where the dodge end is, ends up on the wing, he also has room, the dodgers have room to kind of make an underneath move or keep going down the alley, as a midfielder does on this play, and he draws a second slide, makes a feed of the crease, which doesn't work out, but it's still a potential look. Because there's so much space and room top center, where this dodge happens, one of the things that sometimes happens is that the dodger works their way back to the middle of the field before the shallow cut and pop action really finishes. In that case, you just simply undo the shallow cut, as you saw in this play. If the dodger establishes themselves as a threat to score, defenses are going to start sliding. And most defenses are going to slide from the, guy, the, the shallow cut guy who's popping up to the top center. And the look out of that is just a throwback to him and a shot if the second slide is late. However, not every team may slide off of the guy who is shallow cutting and kind of popping out from the top center. If it's on a rollback or a later slide down, down the wing, potentially it comes from the crease off of that crease attackman. And in this case, hopefully he's a, you have a good crease finisher who's able to cut in behind the slide, uh, curl up, catch and finish like Jack Bruckner does on this play. If the slide does come from the shallow cut, and there's a second rotation up from the backside wing, the potential for a throwback and then a pass to the backside for a shot. If you watch the slide, it comes first from the shallow cut, then there's a rotation from the backside midfielder up top, and then North Carolina doesn't quite have it figured out who's rotating out to that backside, whether it's from the crease or from the backside post. It makes them a little bit late and, and frees up the shooter. Even if that first slide doesn't free anybody up for a good look, it has the potential to create a situation where you get a dodge, a slide, uh, rolling back and move the ball, and then that guy is able to dodge 
into the recovering defense who's not ready to slide again and find it somebody for an open look. Or potentially you have a dodge, a throwback to the shallow cut, one more to the backside, and then that player is able to attack a, a poor closeout from a defender. The way that most defenses were trying to slide to this was to have the first slide come from the shallow cut, the second slide is a rotation up from the backside midfielder to the top center, and then uh, you'll bump on the crease and recover, have the recovery come to the crease, and the crease defender will close out the backside midfielder on the wing. However, the execution isn't always what you would want it to be defensively. So in this case, there's going to be a rollback, uh, move the ball to the top center, and he's going to dodge again. You run this, it's the same thing again. And this time, there's some confusion about who's closing out to that backside wing. The defender in the back post comes up, and it leaves the crease guy, who thought that's where he was rotating to, not really sure what to do. And he, you end up leaving an attackman on the backside post wide open for the skip pass. It's also a nice pass fake from that top center defender out to the wing to draw the defense out there and open up the skip pass lane. So far, everything that I've been showing in terms of examples and talking about has been very midfield driven. One of the ways to get the attack a little bit more involved is when a dodge comes down the alley, you can move the ball to X and get a dodge up the backside from that attackman. In this case, the attack uh, kind of triangle that starts won't rotate into the 1-3-2 look. You'll just keep one attackman at X to allow the midfielder to move the ball to him and to attack the backside on a dodge, like you're seeing here. With those two attackmen still in on the crease, the backside wing is cleared out for that dodge. You can get kind of a similar look if the ball comes down the alley, you move to the attackman, but he doesn't necessarily have to dodge right into, into the defense. You can just move the ball back around and set, set up another midfield dodge back into the same set after swinging the ball around the outside. As you see Duke does here against Syracuse. Turning our attention a little bit more to the defensive side of playing against this offensive set, um, one of the things that you'll see happen that kind of blows up the play is anytime you get a long pull who can get out and get on players' hands and stop them from moving the ball, even if there's open players behind them, it prevents them from moving it there in time to do any damage. Um, another potential rotation against this, there's a slide from the shallow cut, is the crease guy is going to come up to the top, and that allows it's one less guy in the rotation. You'll have the same recovery to the crease that you did, that we saw before. One of the other things that defenses try to do against this was to hedge and recover. So you'll see the shallow cut guy is going to start to slide and then go back. And they kind of run into each other there, and then they actually slide on the rollback and force a bad pass. It's one of the risks of the hedge and recover, though, is if you get in the way of the on-ball defender. Here's a little bit cleaner look at it. You'll see... LSM, once again, hedges, forces that Dodger to take a step out because they anticipate the, the slide coming, and then you can go right back and not actually slide. Here's another great example of a hedge and recover where you start to go and then go back to their guy as the, the Dodger kind of takes their path further away from the goal where they're not a threat. That concludes... What I have to say, all the different examples and different looks of things that I wanted to talk about regarding this set. Um, there's still some more examples that you can find if you go back and watch some of the Duke film. But it's one of kind of their key, their, co their core offensive sets that you'll see them run pretty often, along with um, a pairs look and some two-man game at X. And this is, if they run this set a lot, you'll tend to see bigger scoring games from their midfielders, since this is such a midfield, a midfield dominant offensive set for them.